Hey everyone, Joe Brady coming to you from my backyard in Warwick, New York. And I'm here to talk about L brackets today. Why? Well, one of the first accessories I order whenever I get a new camera body is an L bracket. This little bit of gear quickly allows you to change the orientation of your camera on a tripod head from horizontal to vertical because each side of the bracket is machined in the same shape as a tripod plate. The most standard tripod plate system is called an Arca Swiss compatible. It comes from the company named Arca Swiss. And what they designed years ago was a 45 degree dovetail on the metal that fits into the receiver and you just tighten it down. This type of attachment works with virtually every tripod out there. Hmm, with one exception that I know of. And for some reason, Manfrotto decided to use their own design that doesn't support the Arca Swiss. So unfortunately, that's a reason that Manfrotto is not at the top of my list when I'm looking for a tripod. Anyway, back to our L brackets. These brackets are constructed so that both sides are Arca Swiss compatible. They both have that dovetail machined into the sides. This allows them to mount on any Arca Swiss style receiver. When you want to switch your orientation again, just simply remove the camera, rotate it, and you're done. Now it's true that many ball heads allow you to rotate your camera from horizontal to vertical. I've got a L bracket on here and there it is mounted horizontally. Now, if I wanted to change this to a vertical orientation, I'd have to spin the tripod head around, find the notch, loosen the camera, bring it down to the side, get it level, and then tighten it up again. Now, the problem when you do this is when you mount a camera sideways like this, if you have a heavy camera body and or a big lens, there's a tendency where you can have a little bit of slippage where the camera will start to drop down as it's sitting there. If you're doing a long exposure, that's obviously a problem. Also, you can see I've lost height. So now I'd have to loosen the center column, get it back up to my eye level, and then tighten it. Yes, it works, but... Again, if something is happening quickly and you don't want to miss it, maybe you have great light, maybe it's wildlife, maybe it's an alien landing. You want to be ready. So watch this. Isn't this going to be a whole lot easier? I just loosen the tripod plate, lift the camera off, and tighten it again, and now I have it vertically. It's really just that simple. That's why you really want to have these things. So I go through all those adjustments and fiddling with knobs and changing the height of your camera when you can just add an L bracket to the camera body and then just flip it around the other way. Now, I particularly like using an L bracket when I'm using a panoramic header. This is my gimbal head. This is something I use all the time because I do shoot a lot of panoramics and not necessarily with a long lens. Since I'm using a shorter lens, there's no foot on the lens to mount to the tripod. So I need to use an L bracket. And if I want to shoot horizontally, I just position it in the receiver, tighten it up, and there you go. I've got my full rotation. So could I shoot panoramics this way? Yes. Subject for another day, you might be asking about nodal points. So I'll address it while we're here, but I promise to do a video on it. This particular tripod gimbal head has the ability to drop down 45 degrees just with a push of a button. So if I do that and now rotate the camera, now the camera is rotating close to its nodal point. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. I'll do a separate video for it. But just to show you right from here, I now have a perfect system for doing horizontal panoramics, but I wanna do verticals. Why? Well, maybe I have stuff at my feet and the nice sky is really nice and I wanna get a little more compression by using a longer lens. So I have those distant mountains look a little bigger. Just loosen your camera, flip it around so that it's mounted vertically. And now my camera is mounted vertically on this head. So again, now I can use a lens that will allow me to shoot panoramic stitches, but I can get stuff right by my feet and far distance. And by using a little longer focal length, I can compress that distance. So this is a kind of rig I use all the time when I'm out shooting panoramics. Even though gimbal heads are designed to go into position really quickly and just stay there without you having to touch anything. So if I want to rotate and change the point, that's how gimbal heads typically work. But since this one has the ability to drop back 45 degrees, it makes it perfect pa for panoramic stitching. I just set it up. I've got the tripod level and I can just get my shots. And that's as easy as it is. Just as a detail, because I know someone's going to see, you might notice that when you mount your camera on a head like this, that the lens isn't exactly centered over the center of the tripod. 
that's actually okay because the softwares nowadays like Lightroom, which is what I primarily use for stitching my panoramic shots together, if that rotation point is a little bit off center, it's fine. The software knows how to deal with it and it fixes it for you. You may also be wondering about getting your camera to rotate exactly around its nodal point. I happen to know we're pretty close here. Again, it's a subject for another day, but I promise I will do a video soon on how to do that. So let's talk about picking out your L bracket. There are two basic types, those that are custom made for your camera and those that are considered a universal bracket. Now in the past, I had always gone with a custom made bracket. It's actually made for the body of the camera. For example, let me grab my X-T30 here. Here's the L bracket on the bottom. Let me get the bug off my arm. Here's the L bracket on the bottom. You can see the openings and everything is molded so that it goes right around the openings. That allows you to do something like open up the battery door or if your cards are in there without having to take off the bracket, which would be pretty annoying. On the other side, so that you can get to your connection door, be it HDMI or audio or battery or what have you, you can do that. And there's a gap in the bracket so that you can get your cables inside and out. Another advantage of the custom-made bracket is that it goes from end to end of the camera, from one end to the other. This does provide a little extra protection should you drop your camera because these bottom edges are safe. So, why would you even consider going with a universal bracket? Let's take a look. I have to admit, I recently started using some universal brackets and they're really quickly growing on me. Now, a universal bracket will mount to practically any camera body. That's the beauty of it. And if you don't switch cameras a lot, you can get by with just one. However, we're talking about a small investment here. So I highly recommend having a bracket for any of your cameras that you may want to mount on a tripod. There are two basic types of universal L brackets. Full length brackets cover the entire bottom of the camera and this does allow the most flexibility on where you want to mount left to right on the tripod head. However, there's one big problem with this. A universal full length bracket goes all the way to the end of the camera body. And what that means is it's blocking your battery door. And for me, the battery door also is where my camera cards go in. This is a deal breaker for me because I need to be able to get to my battery and my card without having to take off the bracket. That is why I prefer the short universal brackets like you see here. The difference is, instead of going all the way across, it goes most of the way across the bottom of the camera and stops just before the battery door, so I can still get to here. Another advantage of a universal bracket is that you can move it front and back on the body. Now, I have this moved up a bit on this particular camera. This is a Fuji XS10, and the reason for that is this camera has a fully articulating LCD screen, and I obviously record a lot of videos. So if I want to take the screen and flip it around the other way, by moving that universal bracket up a little bit, it allows that screen to come all the way around for that selfie mode video. So let's sum up. If you want added protection for your camera body and you don't need to flip around your LCD screen, a custom shaped L bracket designed for your specific camera body is a great solution. These brackets also offer the most support for heavy cameras like those big DSLRs and the medium format sensor cameras. Custom brackets give you all the mounting points you need. There's Arca Swiss dovetailing on both bottom and side. You can get to your battery door. You can get to your accessory door and it does protect the bottom corners of your camera should you drop it. Short bottom universal brackets offer the most flexibility. They provide a clear space for opening the battery door. They can be adjusted left, right, forward, or backwards to fine tune the position of the camera on the tripod head, and you can mount these to any camera you have. Universal brackets are an inexpensive investment to ensure that your camera is always ready to be mounted on a tripod. I feel that the universal brackets that don't cover the entire bottom of your camera are a great choice because in addition to functioning perfectly, they're also lighter than full body brackets. Whichever way you go, get yourself an L bracket and chances are you're never gonna take it off your camera. You won't ever need to go looking for a tripod plate and your camera will always be ready for you whenever you wanna use your tripod. I'll leave some related links down below so that you can explore for yourself and decide what's gonna be the best choice for your needs. Thanks for visiting with me and I'll see you online again soon. Bye-bye.